Does your Ender 3 have a warped bed? Well, here's a guide to adding easy ABL auto bed leveling. Finally, I have all the parts needed to make my guides on adding easy ABL and BL touch auto bed leveling videos for the Ender 3. First up, we're going to cover the Easy ABL, which is sold by Tim from TH3D, the owner of the Unified Marlin firmware. He offers two versions, the Direct Wire, which I'm showcasing here, as well as the Easy Connect, which is completely plug and play. For me, I opted for the Direct Connect version, it's slightly cheaper and I didn't want to have to use up a separate power point to power the Easy ABL. Enough talk, I want to keep this snappy. All links are in the description and before you attempt this guide, it's very important that you've already flashed a bootloader, which I've covered previously. Here comes a complete step-by-step -step guide on printed parts, installation, firmware, calibration, and print settings. Let's go. Here's everything we get in our direct wire kit. We have the actual sensor, we have a control box, and the gray wire is to connect to the power supply. If you were installing the Easy Connect, you would also have a power supply that went into the wall and went directly into the black box to power the system. Here's the mount that I'm using. It goes with the Petsbang version 2 fan, and I covered this in a previous video. I think it's a good idea that immediately after printing, you check that your part fits. So that means getting the sensor, taking off one of the retaining nuts and putting it through just to make sure everything fits before you pull the printer apart in case you need to make adjustments. Now there are numerous options for which mount you choose and the STLs are in fact included in the download of the unified firmware. I've made your choice, you can make yours. Let's get started on this process by disassembling the old system. We're going to start by removing the two small M2 bolts that hold on the fan and then we can carefully rest that down to the side. After that there are four bolts on the side of the pets bank and they will remove the big fan shroud over the top. We can also slide that one off. Next comes the fan on the front, there's only three bolts for that. Once they're undone you can carefully lay the fan to the side and then finally we have our single retaining bolt on the left hand side that holds on the mount. If you're doing this from stock, simply undo the nuts and bolts as you see them until your extruder looks like you're seeing here. And now for some reassembly. We start by fitting the cover back over the hot end and you have to clip it into the right hand side and then get in that single bolt on the left which clamps everything down tight. After you've done it up, give it a shake, make sure everything is extremely stable. Now we're going to put the fan back on, only three bolts if you're using this Petsbang V2. Once again, make sure everything is solid. We don't want to introduce inaccuracy from Wobble. Previously, I printed my Petsbank V2 duct from PLA and people asked how that would go. Well, it melted just a tiny bit near the nozzle. The airflow was still coming out. This time I reprinted in ABS. Now, when you're fitting a new mount like this, I'd recommend getting the screw first and using it just to cut the thread. It makes it much easier later on when you put on the actual parts. So you're not trying to align and get the thread started at the same time. It should be now pretty easy to get the two screws either side to hold the duct on and then after that we can turn our attention to the cooling fan on top. Be careful cutting the thread so you get a nice secure mount. Finally we can put in our new Easy ABL sensor. Just putting it roughly into position, we're not tightening anything at this stage, we need to calibrate the height later on. Now we're going to get some cable ties and we're going to leave a little bit of slack in the Easy ABL wire and we're just going to do them loosely for now, we'll tie them in their final position later on. That's the hot end assembly finished, so it's time to wire this thing up. And surely I don't need to tell you that you need to disconnect all of the power for the next steps. Now we have to locate the NZ stop, and by default you're meant to cut it and then insert it into the control box, but I found another solution that's reversible. I've got this little wiring kit, links in the description, and I made up this tiny little plug. Doing it this way makes it reversible, and I can plug it directly into the end stop switch that goes into the main board, and then the other two ends can go as originally planned into the appropriate position in the control box. Now to power the control box, I needed about half of the gray cable and I stripped the wire and then I made the connections as seen here. Make sure you get the positive and negative around the right way or you will blow everything up. After this, you can put the cover back on. We're finished in there, but we still need to connect the other end of the power cables to the main board. I found it easiest to work from the bottom instead of peering in. There's enough room if you undo the screw terminals to get in the matching red and black wires and then it will be powered from the 24 volts that's going into the main board. I reapplied the cable ties and cable wraps to make it nice and secure. Snip off your cable ties, feed everything back through the way it was, fold everything back together and you're ready to go. Next we're going to mount the control box. I had a couple of T-nuts and matching bolts left over in the spares, so I broke them out, I slid them in, 
and I positioned everything in line and did up the screws. I reckon this is a pretty tidy place to mount the control box. It's clear of any moving parts and all of the wires are the right length. There is a fair bit of extra cable going to the hot end. So I zip tied that, cut it neatly and then tucked it in the inside. And finally, you always check the travel for the components around just to make sure nothing's gonna snag and make your printer unreliable. That's the end of our electrical connection. So if you turn on the printer and put your finger underneath, you should notice that a red light comes on when you touch it. If this doesn't happen, you need to go back and recheck all of your wiring. Now I manually twist the Z lead screw to move it down until the nozzle is just resting on the bed. And I've got a little two millimeter piece of foam and I loosen the nuts sensor down so it's just touching them and then tighten everything. It doesn't need to be exact, but the closer you can get the better. Finally, we are ready to update the firmware and you need to start by downloading the latest copy of the unified firmware from TH3D, links in the description. So after you download the firmware, you have a zip file and I have unzipped this into my Arduino sketch folder and to get started, all we need to do is go to open firmware windows. Now, as it rightly says, everything that we need to change is in configuration H and all of the instructions are actually in this file. So we've scrolled down and we've got to end of three. So firstly, we're gonna delete the double slash and that will get rid of this being a comment and therefore it goes colored and it's gonna be included into the firmware. Now I've used the Petsbang, so I'm going to delete that comment as well. So if we keep scrolling down, we get to the advanced settings for our Easy AVL and this defines the amount of points. Now it's not actually four points, it means a four by four grid. So I'm gonna start with three by three just to speed it up and I can always up it later on if I feel that's not accurate enough. It says in the instructions for an end of three to keep this number small. So if you have a really big bed on a CR10 or something like that, you can make this number bigger. That's how far from the edge it's gonna start the probing. I'm mega impatient, so I am going to define fast probe. If I find, like it says here, that I'm losing accuracy, I can always uncomment this and then slow it down. I wanna retain the factory end of boot screen, so I'm going to uncomment this line here, define end of boot. And the last thing I'm gonna do is to define custom printer name and I'm gonna have it as end of three ABL. That's it, I'm gonna hit compile just to check that everything is gonna work and then after that, I'm gonna to upload to the printer. Oh, we got a little snag and it wants this to come up the top and select the correct board, which we will do and now we'll re-verify and that should fix everything. Next, we have a short process to test everything's connected properly and then some calibration. For calibration, it's very important that you heat the bed up to whatever you print at. Personally, I print PLA at 60 degrees and ABS at 100 degrees, so the instructions tell me to set it halfway at 80 degrees for my calibration. Raise the print head up to make sure there's nothing underneath and the red light is off, and then you're gonna use a program of your choice to send the M119 command, and what you wanna see is that the Z min is open. Now you're gonna reach and block the sensor to make the red light come on, Send the same command again, and hopefully it now says that it's closed or triggered. If it's wrong, simply switch around your Z end stop wiring. Manually move the nozzle down so it's just touching the bed, and then locate and twist clockwise the little adjustment screw on top until the red light comes on. If it turns off when you remove the screwdriver, twist it clockwise just a little bit more. This is how you calibrate the distance from the sensor to the bed. If everything has gone well so far, hold your breath and home the machine. It's gonna do the X and Y first in the corner and then move the probe to the very center for safe homing. It's gonna come down and fingers crossed, nothing's gonna collide and you know your sensor is working as it should be. One more calibration step and that is the Z offset. You're gonna use the LCD to move it down to zero, put a piece of paper underneath and then set it to the fine adjustment, 0.1 of a millimeter. Move it down until it just pinches. For me, 0.1 held a little bit, 0.2 stopped it from sliding altogether and zero had it sliding freely. So I remembered that number, minus 0.1 millimeters. You then come back to the other part of the menu where you go to motion under control and you're gonna enter that same number. So I put in my 0.1 millimeters, then you go to store settings and your Z offset is done. We are calibrated and a reminder that you can change your Z offset whenever you want from that same menu later on. Turn the dial to the left to move the nozzle closer, turn the dial to the right to lift it higher up. Another reminder is to store your settings each time, otherwise when you reset the printer, they'll be gone. Now we're very close to printing. All we need to do is update our start G code so the slicing software inserts the appropriate code to enable the auto bed leveling at the start of each print. So I have my nice large one layer thick X to test the bed leveling. So the last thing we need to do is change our start G code for this. So I'm gonna edit my process and I'm gonna put it to N3. 
I'm doing this in Simplify 3D, but it works the same in any slicer that you're using. We're gonna to come to scripts and then take our start G code from what's in the guide. Now I'm probably gonna modify mine a little bit because I'm comfortable with what I'm doing. So here's my existing G code and here's the new one. So I'm gonna take what I want from this and add it to here. First thing, I don't have a filament sensor on, so I'm gonna delete that line. I don't have a direct E motor. We have a Bowden set up, so we can delete this line here. Homol axis is already there, and after this is where we're gonna put in the new part. So we're gonna take these three lines here, which relate to the probing. This is a message onto the screen. I'm not interested in that. And then our G92E0 is what I already have, and the rest is more or less the same as what we have now. So I'm gonna delete everything here. Basically, the new lines that we've added are after homing all axes to then home the Z again for accuracy. And then the G29 is the actual bed probing method where the mesh is saved. The heaters start going again. I'm going to get this one fitting. And we're going to slice and I'm going to send it to Octoprint to get it done. At last, it is time to start the first print to see auto bed leveling in action. So here is the bed leveling sequence uninterrupted. Let me talk you through it. We first home X and Y, and then it comes to the middle for safe homing and does Z. And now it can come to the nine points that we prescribed because we set a three by three grid in the firmware. And it will go to each one, lift up, come down a little bit more slowly for a more accurate reading, and then move on to the next one. This whole process adds around 30 seconds or so to the start of your print. Remembering that we enabled the fast version of this, so it's gonna be much slower if you don't do that. Also having three by three is obviously gonna be faster than having four by four probing. Each of these can be changed for more accuracy at the expense of speed. Now it comes back to the start and I'm happy to say that with this first ABS test print, the first layer was pretty much spot on. I would say that there was a little bit of over extrusion from being just a little bit too close to the bed. But you can easily fix that with your Z offset. After I did that, I moved to PLA and I ran the exact same print minus the temperature changes for PLA and that one turned out pretty good as well. So far, I was pretty happy with this sensor. So that's all working very well as you would hope for, but it's time for a proper test. What we're gonna do is fit a different build surface and that one is made out of glass because this sensor is meant to be able to handle it. I had a spare AnyCubic Ultra Base lying around. It's a little bit too small for this, but I tested it nonetheless. I had problems with the piece of paper underneath and also with the binder clip, so I had to make some adjustments to get it to work cleaning most of the gunk from underneath and therefore the paper with it and just resting it on top without binder clips solved the problem. Also had to turn up the sensitivity just a little bit on the sensor to get it to detect the glass nicely. After I got these right, I got a pretty good first layer off this and it adjusted for the extra thickness of the glass just fine. Now, unfortunately, when you're changing the type of material for your bed surface, it will change the way the sensor reads it and you have to test again and update your Z offset. Fortunately, there's a way to test this once and then insert the G-code at the start of each print. The command is M851 and it's described in detail in the instructions linked below. There's one other nice feature, which is baby stepping that works like Prusa's Mark III Live Z. Let's have a look at how that works. During the first layer, if you go to the tune menu and scroll down until you get to baby step Z, you can then control how high the nozzle is above the bed in real time and the rest of the print will stay at this level. If you're finding that you're constantly adjusting it to the same number, adjust your Z offset to this. So you might be wondering about the repeatability of the probe, especially in the fast settings I've enabled. Well, I've got an Octoprint plugin that will show us exactly what's happening. This is the bed level visualizer plugin for Octoprint. You hit the update button, it takes readings and it will give you a graphical representation. Now this looks really crooked, but if you look on the scale on the right, we have quite a small variation. Here's two back to back and you can see that it was quite repeatable. You can use this plugin to guide leveling the bed so it has a much flatter starting point in the first place. Well, that wraps up my guide and so far so good for me. Tim from TH3D is an enthusiast just like us. It's a family run business and if you are gonna order one of these, please make sure you get the original one, not any cheap counterfeits off elsewhere on the internet. He prides himself on offering support and assistance to customers after they've purchased these kits. So that adds a lot of value to the price. Unless there's a disaster, my next video is going to be a very similar guide on how to fit the VL Touch to an Ender 3. After that, I'll do a short comparison video comparing the two systems. So hit subscribe so you don't miss that. Thank you so much for watching and happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page.
See you next time.